Hey guys, whoa, my bath. There we go. Uh, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, we're gonna continue with our um, very cool looking uh, ADEX helmet, the ADEX project. Uh, but before we do that, I actually had a um, comment yesterday from one of our good friends, Dr. Manhattan in YouTube. Um, and he was saying that he should be talking more positively about his work in the way I do it when I'm um, working on it. So I wanted to explain why I do that. Um, this all comes back or, or goes back to when I was a student. And uh, in one of my first classes, one of my first 3D classes, we were um, tasked with creating an environment, like a nice little environment there for, uh, for like commercials and stuff. And I delivered mine, and the teacher always gave us a little bit of a chance to present their work. So I would be like, okay, so this is my work. I uh, took a long time doing this. I really enjoyed the process. It's not looking as great. I, I don't like how it looks here and here. So I started criticizing my own work, and the teacher stopped me. He's like, hey, dude, like, what the hell are you doing? That, like, who, like, why do you think it's a good idea to talk bad about your work? Like that's that's the worst thing you can do. Even if your work is bad, you should never talk about bad about your work. It's your work, so you should at least try to present it in the best possible light. Um, and that really changed the chip because uh, a chip on my head because it, it's it's one of those things that we tend to do, right? Like we're we're really harsh on ourselves when we're working when we're delivering stuff. And uh, if we're presenting something and we're already talking bad about the thing that we're presenting, then whoever is watching it or taking a look at it will immediately think that it's bad as well because we're already telling them it's bad and we were the ones who did it right so by changing the way you phrase things and by changing the way you talk about your own stuff your own art it also changes the expectation or the way that people perceive your stuff that doesn't mean that you can't go out there make like horrible stuff present it as if it's the like the next uh, uh, wonder and expect everyone to follow through of course if you see something that's bad well, just don't present it. Make sure that you always try to do things that are good. But if you're doing something and it does look good, you should be the first one to say, hey, this is looking cool. This is looking good. I like this. That way, when people see your work, they're like, yeah, that, that actually looks cool. It, it's a nice uh, a nice piece of work, right? So so always try to po to talk positive about your work when you're like confident that your work has merit and is good. If you know that your work is bad and, and we're, we're really, again, we're really... We tend to be really self-conscious about our work. When we know it's bad, then yeah, don't present it or, or just keep polishing it until you feel confident that it is a good job. But never talk bad about your job. If you don't have anything nice to say about your work, don't say anything. Just wait for your client or for the teacher or for whoever is gonna evaluate you to say something. That way, if, if, they, if they say, yeah, this is bad, this is bad, you need to change this, fix it or whatever, you know that you have to do it. But don't be the first one to criticize your own work. That would be my advice. Um, and before we go on to the final section, I just want to remind you guys that if you want to keep improving your art, we of course have a, the Skillshare promotion. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're gonna be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. Very well. So today, as I mentioned, we're going to continue with the final presentation. I'm going to show you how to set up the UDIMs that we have here for the helmet. And uh, we're going to set up some of the other materials as well. So for the UDIMs, it's actually like fairly easy. I'm going to show you a little trick here to make things a little bit e uh, like faster. So I'm going to go to my substance uh, palette, which I don't have set up. So let's go Windows, plugins and um, managers. Let's make sure that Arnold is turned on. Am I to Arnold? Is it turn on? Yeah, okay. Now let's look for substance. There we go. So I definitely want to load things. I might not want to have them load like every single time, but I, I, I do want to have them load right now. So there we go. Uh, this is now loaded. So if I go here to this one, we can do this thing called apply workflow to material. We're going to select multiple maps. And as you can see, we have our base color, emissive. Uh, we don't need the height map, metalness, normal, and roughness. And I'm going to hit a select. And it will automatically notice that it has the flag, so base color, normal, rough, and metallic, and emissive. Again, we don't need any of this ones right here. I'm going to hit apply. And what this will do is it will automatically create, which is super, super cool, it will automatically create the material for us right here. 
So as you can see, this material has all of the necessary maps. This is going to be the ADEX material. So I'm going to call this M ADEX. Uh, and it has all of the necessary information to create the proper normal map, the proper like uh, color space, everything. Everything is set up properly. But we don't have the uh, UDEM uh, process set up. So to set up a UDEM process, the only thing we need to do is we need to go to each texture, like normal here, and we're going to change this UV tiling mode to the UDEM MARI option. As you can see, it will automatically find four tiles. That's it. We don't need to generate the previous. If you want to generate them, you're you're free to do so. But we really don't need to, uh, because I don't want to see them on the on the viewport. Same here for the roughness. Just make sure that the color space does not change. So you them, emissive, you them, and the metalness, you them. And as you can see, since the, the files that we exported from Substance Painter have the proper uh, UDEM information right here, it will be exporting everything in the proper uh, element. Let me just give it just one second. There we go. So uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the object right here, right click, and I'm going to assign the existing material, which is going to be the ADEX material. And there we go. Again, we're not going to see the preview right here. We're not actually going to see the, the object, but it's uh, it's going to be there. Now, for the horns, I'm going to assign a different material. So I'm going to assign a new material, uh, Arnold, AI standard surface. Let's just keep a different material for now. Let's do a very basic light setup. I think we're going to go for this very dramatic uh, effect. So whenever you're trying to find like a, a good option for your, for your stuff, the best thing you can do is just look for uh, like some reference. So if I look for sci-fi helmet, I'm going to find some like render stuff that looks interesting. So we can go for like a front view like this one. We can go for like a semi like right view like this one right here. Um, there's a couple of them that we can use as inspiration. Like this one right here, I really like. Uh, it looks very, very interesting. I think we're going to go for this one, like a side view. I think that one like portrays the, the whole thing the best. But we're going to go, because um, the ADEX name is over here. So we're going to go probably like here. So we're going to go rendering, create a new camera, panels, and look to select it. And we're going to find a good composition here. So something like this, I think, works nice. I kind of want to go like three quarters, though. I don't know. It's one of those things that I always, you always struggle trying to find like the best possible one. I think this one's fine. What we can do is we can have like a like a front view here and a side view. That could be another option. We can do that comp later on, of course. So let's try something like this first. Give me just one second. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, it's uh, it's always a little bit difficult to find times to um, to record because I'm I'm constantly being bombarded by uh, messages uh, about the studio, clients, <laughs> family, everything. So yeah, now uh, one thing I'm gonna change I'm gonna change the focal length to something like uh, 55, so that it's a little bit flatter because uh, I, I I don't want to see like even maybe like a 90. I, I, I don't want to see the the other horn here. I, I kind of want to hide both horns behind well the other horns. So that we can only, or that we're only seeing the, the helmet right here. There we go. So that's going to be the, the shot. The camera is right there. And uh, we can start thinking about the light. So for the light, uh, one of the best things we can do, of course, is use an HDRI. And uh, we all know that our favorite place to look for HDRIs is Polyhaven. So when selecting a HDRI, in this particular case, I would recommend a studio setup. And I would probably recommend one of those like dramatic studio setup lights, like this one right here. See how we get like this very interesting like whites on, on both sides of the sphere. That's the kind of stuff that I'm, uh, that I'm going for. So I'm going to download this real quick. We're going to uh, copy this into our project. So here in source images, just paste it right there. And now inside of Maya, we're going to say uh, Arnold lights, and we're going to create a sky dome light. And on the color, of course, we're going to let this thing in. That's this one right here. Perfect. So it's again, it's very sharp. And uh, here's where I need to decide where I want these two lights to be. Uh, and based on the kind of like composition that I want to go for, I think I'm going to have them on the other side of the helmet. So this one's going to be shining on the front here, and that one's going to be shining on the back. So we're going to have light here and light here based on our camera position. Let's save this real quick. Let's call this ADEX a render. And I'm going to say Arnold. Open Arnold render view. We're going to change this to uh, Arnold. Open Arnold render view. And we're just going to hit render. 
we're going to have to convert all of the textures, of course, as you can see right there. And uh, in just a second, we should see like something. It won't be perfect. Remember, the first time we do a render, it's never perfect. We need to tweak things. Uh, let me pause real quick, wait for the render to finish, and I'll show you the result. There we go. Actually, it didn't took uh, that long. Now, one thing we can do, um, you know, if you have the uh, GPU, you can just change this to GPU. And then uh, when rendering with GPU, it should be slightly faster. Now we do select the camera shape and look at this. We get this very, very interesting look here for the for the helm. Very dramatic, right? Very, very dramatic. Um, we definitely need to increase the samples and add the denoiser and all that stuff, like the fancy stuff. Uh, let's go here. I think the test resolution is a little bit low. Oh, it's fine. Well, let's change this to full HD then. To full HD. There we go. And we get this. Cool. So the first thing I'm, I'm trying to find is whether or not we're seeing the textures like properly everywhere. And yep, it, it seems like things are working nicely. We have the emission uh, maps there. We have everything. Now let's change the horns. So I'm going to go to the horns and they're going to be like a glass material. So I'm going to go to transmission. So like this all the way up, as you can see, when we turn on transmission, we uh, pretty much like invalidate the color uh, properties of our object. And in the transmission color, we're going to select this sort of like orange uh, color that we had a couple of renders ago. There we go. That looks really, really nice. So this looks quite nice, but it's a little bit too dramatic, I would say. And we're not really seeing like a whole bunch of the of the scene. So here's where I am going to be using this lights as a sort of uh, like environment, but I'm going to be placing my own lights to give this thing even like a, a better presentation. So I'm going to stop this one right here. I'm going to go here into exposure. I'm going to go like minus four, really, really low exposure. So that when we render, there's not a lot of light. You could also see that the light was being a little bit too harsh. Like it's, it was really, really intense. So a minus five. There we go. That like that looks really nice. <laughs> Again, very dramatic, but uh, I, I like the <coughs> the effect. Now I want to have a like a front light uh, hitting like most of this like section so that we can see the ADEX uh, name here on the character. So I'm going to go uh, R node lights. We're going to add an area light. I'm going to change the shape to a disc so that it's a round area light. Um, I'm going to make it not super big. I, I want like harsh shadows. Remember the size of the light will give you a different result depending on what type of uh, like light you have. Um, by the way, all of this you can find on the cinematic lighting course that we released a couple of uh, weeks ago. So yeah, this one's going to be like right about here. Let's uh, really increase the exposure. Let's go for like a 10. And let's render. 10 is not enough. Let's go 15. There we go. Now that looks nice. You can see the, the harsh lights that we're getting there. And again, we're getting a, a really, really interesting effect. Now, we can't do this by just like this light alone, because as you can see, there is a little bit of information that we're getting from the other lights. Uh, but this one's really, really helping uh, like shape some of the information here. I am not going to change the color. I, I think the color is looking quite, quite nice. What I am going to do is I'm going to duplicate this light. I'm going to throw in another one of this on the horns, like up here, because as you can see, they're getting a little bit dark and I want to illuminate them a little bit more. See how nice this starts to look. This is, this is, by the way, one of the main like key points that I teach throughout the, the, the cinematic lighting course is how we need to, to think about light and use light to paint our scene. Light, light is like a, like a paintbrush that we're going to be using to, to give specific points to certain areas. Now, for instance, I really like this new shine that we get here on the horns, but I don't like that we have a lot of light right here. I really like the, the one that we had before. What can we do? Well, we can grab this one right here, lower the spread size, so that it, it only shines on specific part of the element like this. And then, of course, lower a little bit the, the intensity. So that way we can we can again paint with light and only hit specific parts of the setup, which is uh, like this upper part right here. Now, I definitely want some sort of rim light uh, on, on some of like the bottom parts. So I'm going to again. Let me actually like. I normally don't don't dock this thing but it might not be a bad idea to do so right now so we can see the image and, and still work over here so I'm gonna duplicate this one that all already has a little bit of spread and we're gonna use this one to light the bottom part of the element there we go definitely a lot lower on the exposure I just want like a little bit of something there let's bring it a little bit forward 
so we get that nice shine look at that beautiful uh, and we're gonna go with like a sci-fi blue to add a little bit of contrast now what I can do is I can move this thing like a little bit closer to the center there we go because I, I want to keep like a couple of things in mystery uh, being able to to story tell through through the way uh, we present our renders is also very important so so one of the things is don't don't show everything like don't uh, you don't show all of your cards, right? Like keep a couple of things in, in mystery and that's gonna give you a, a nicer effect, a nicer result. I, I, I would like to have a little bit of that like blue hue over here. So again, I'm gonna duplicate this light and just move it to the back like this. I can maybe push it like up a little bit more. And you can see how I'm, I'm literally, it's kind of like, I'm, it's, it's, it's not kind of, it's literally I'm painting with light. I'm using my light here to give specific points and specific um, like details in certain areas of my element. Now that looks quite, quite nice. One thing I also wanna do is on the material itself, on the emissive map of the material, we can actually change the weight to something like a five and that's gonna make the lights shine a little bit more. So those are gonna give me like a, a bigger glow. I also thinking about like modifying the spread on the front light. As you can see, by modifying the spread, we're, we're focusing more light here on the center. That's also increasing the exposure quite a bit, so we can play around with the with the intensity there and find like the perfect like the perfect uh, solution, something like that. I really like that. I would love to have a blue rim light as well. Can we get that? Let's see. And I grab one more light. Oh, let's move this thing to the side and point it towards the helmet. And we're gonna make this one really blue. So see how we start getting that blue sort of like image right there. Yeah, we get something there. Yeah, you can turn this on and off to, to see how much it's affecting the, the whole thing. I think it's a little bit high. And uh, you can always ask, your, ask yourself, is this working? Is this not working? I don't think it's working, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm just going to delete it. And uh, there we go. I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Let me get this out and let us... Oh, there we go. Well, let's focus on this thing a little bit more. We are rendering at 1020 um, or 1920 by 1080. So this is a full the full render. But as you can see, it's quite noisy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the samples. Well, let's save real quick. Uh, let's save real quick. There we go. And now on the samples, I'm gonna be using adaptive sampling. So I'm gonna enable adaptive sampling. Let's say 10. I don't think we need that many. That should clean up uh, samples a little bit more. Uh, glass materials are always uh, like difficult to work with. It's it's part of the part of the deal, <laughs> if you wish, um, or if uh, if you could say it that way. So I know that we're gonna have a little bit of an issue with samples. Uh, if we add the denoiser, which we know it's always gonna be a, a great way to to minimize uh, that sort of stuff, um, it's definitely gonna help. But one thing that I know is that if I were to render a a sequence like a, like an animation the denoiser would be very like blurry. It would create some weird things. So I'm gonna add the denoiser there real quick. And let's render again. And yeah, as you can see, I mean, it's definitely better. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better. Uh, a lot cleaner. And we got something. Now we can go back to the original HDRI and say, hey, you know what, maybe let's go to minus three. So we can get a little bit more light in. That's gonna give me a little bit more contrast, I think. Minus four. And if these shadows are too dark, which, I don't know, it kind of feels like they are. I, I kind of like this, to be honest, because it gives this very interesting effect uh, overall. But if you feel like these are too uh, too big or too dark, we can definitely change them up and add like another like bounce light. Uh, let me show you how to do that real quick. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go Arnold, lights, area light. I'm just gonna add like a big area light hitting the, the front here. Let's try like a 12 exposure. There we go. So see how that like softens the shadows a little bit? You can try 14. 
Like, that's a little bit too much, because I really like the dark thing that we had before. So, let's go 13, maybe, like, 12.5. Like, it's uh, it's the balance, right? And uh, this is where, where, of course, your client or or the, the final output will, will come into play, because you might have a specific sort of sensibility or taste for how you would like things to be presented. And there's going to be other people that have a, a different way to, to present those, those things, right? So... So I think this one's not bad. Uh, I, I kind of like it, to be honest. Um, so now I just want to play a little bit with the composition. And that means the camera. So I'm going to say panels look to select it. I'm going to turn on this thing right here, which is um, it ignores all of the materials that you have inside of Maya, and it just gives you a basic material so that you can see things a little bit clearer. And I'm already thinking about wh what kind of composition um, uh, do I want. I'm actually thinking about my, my wallpaper because I changed the wallpaper a couple of uh, days ago. And this one's really pixelated. So I'm thinking, hey, it would be cool to have the, the helmet here as the, as the wallpaper, right? So so I want to have, um, I think I'm going to push this to the to the front like this. I'm not sure if I want to see like a three-quarter view. I really like this sort of like orthographic like side view of the of the helmet. But I'm gonna leave it empty on this side right here. I don't want to cut the horns, to be honest, because they're they're an important part of the of the composition. But it would be very cool to have the helmet like this, like this this shot right here. I think it's also quite nice, right? Because we get to see some of the details of the of the piece, and and this looks. I think this looks nice. But we lose the horns, and the horns are, are quite important for the for the overall composition. So some. Think we're gonna have to settle for this we could also go for like a very like centered composition like this one or we can do i think i i think that one could be nice as well we can do like this composition right here and then have have uh half of the helmet on this side right here let's see how that looks so let's render this one which looks quite nice again if i may say so myself i'm gonna make it a little bit smaller it's always important this is again something that you have to develop with practice and, and with taste it's how, how much of the thing you're going to show, right? So uh, I, I'm even though I'm making this smaller, it's giving me a little bit more breathing room on certain areas. So, so it's, it's trying to find, I'm, I'm trying to find that like balance of, of where this looks good or not. And this is another one of those things that you're going to have to bounce with your client or, or with whoever is going to be approving the final uh, piece because... Um, Everyone has different sensibilities and everyone likes like different things on the on the process Let's Stop this Okay, so my idea is to have this one right here and then Let me let me save this one right here as a as an image and now let's create another camera And let's go for like a front view So that we have this one like on the side like this, right? So we're gonna comp this, of course. That we don't need to do this on a single on a single shot. We're gonna comp this, uh, but I need to make sure that it looks good on on all of the cameras. So, for instance, this shot right here, I don't like it. Why? Because everything is it's lit. It looks really really weird. So, what can we do to to be able to render both shots? Well. Uh, if I really like the other, th there's two options. Either we get two geometries or we uh, move the set of lights. I think the two geometries is, uh, or it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to say Control D. And what I'm going to do is on the, on frame one, I'm going to animate the visibility of this one. And on frame two, this is going to be off. And then this one on frame one, or in yeah, on frame one is going to be on. And on frame zero, this is going to be off. So if we go to frame one. What I can do is this camera let's go also for like a like a 55 or like a 60 lens i'm gonna grab this group right here and when i rotate this nine degrees now this one here is gonna be off so on frame zero it's only that one and on frame one hey is it not working you should be off. Do I have? Oh, I didn't have auto keyframe turn on. There we go. So this one's off, and here it should be set to on. So this is going to be rotated 90 degrees. There we go. And this one 
in here, it's gonna be off. There we go. So one and two. It's the same uh, mesh, same material, same everything. We just need to, I'm gonna use this little option right here to center this as nicely as possible. And since uh, it's the same position, pretty much, like the only thing that, like the, the light scenario, or the light setup, there we go, should be the same. So this light setup looks way, 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 way better than the one that we had before, right? So we're gonna have this one right here on one side and then this one right here on another uh, on another side. We do have the, well, we don't have the transparency. We don't have the transparency because we forgot to remove the visibility on the camera right here. There we go. So now there's the alpha channel for that one and this one will have its alpha channel as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now it's just a matter of, again, finding like the proper framing here. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Let's find the center piece right there. Let's render. That looks quite, quite nice. Yeah, so that's it, guys. I'm just gonna wait for this to, to finish. I'll render this one out, I'll render the other one out, and then in Photoshop, I'm just gonna combine it. That's the thumbnail that you probably saw. And uh, that's it. If you guys want the wallpaper, let me know, and I can upload it somewhere so that you can download it if you wanna use it as a wallpaper, of course. Um, but this is the, the end of this project. We're finished with the ADEX project. And uh, I think this was a very fun project. We went all the way from uh, initial ideation to a final uh, presentation piece. So if you liked it, if you liked the series, make sure to leave a comment, make sure to let us know, because that's the way we know how to move forward with the channel. Channel. Uh, make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back on the next one. We're now going to finish the boots. We need to finish that one as well. So it's probably going to be the next project that we finish. Thank you very much, guys. It's been a pleasure for me so far. And um, that's it. I'll see you back on the next one. Have a good, comment. Uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.